This video is going to talk about the transformations of graphs. And if you look at your worksheet, and this can also be found on page 202 of our Coburn textbook, but you have function families. And if you can figure out what function family it comes from, then it will be easier to be able to write the equation of a function if that's been transformed, or even just to figure out how it was transformed. So we have linear, quadratic, absolute value looks like a V, square root, if you remember, starts at 0, 0 and goes up from there. We've got this cubic, and then we've got a cube root, which almost looks like a cubic that you just kind of turned on its side and flipped over. So we will want to reference that as we go. So here we want to practice. It says determine the parent function and describe how the graph shifted and write the new function. Now h is the way it shifted in the x direction and k is the way it shifted in the y direction. So the parent function here is going to be quadratic. I'll take the vertex how it moved. So it looks like it moved over 3, so h would be 3, and it moved down 2, and it down would be a negative 2, and so now we have a quadratic with h and k. Well quadratics look like y is equal to x minus h quantity squared plus k. So plugging in what we know, y is equal to x minus 3 quantity squared minus 2 since it was a negative 2 for the k. Okay, so now we're going to talk about reflections. And in reflections, for the, we're going to call this a vertical reflection. If you look at your paper, it says the y is equal to the opposite of f of x. So that means that here we had our other graph. This was the parent function. The parent function here is the square root. When I had this point over here, it was 4, 2. Now I'm going to have that same x, but I'm going to have the opposite y. So we now have the point x, negative y. That's what we're going to be graphing, or what we have, which is exactly what we have. And so it says the opposite of f of x, so the square root of x was our function, and we want the opposite of that. This one is going to be a horizontal reflection. What a horizontal reflection says is that y is equal to f of the opposite of x. The original graph looks something like this. And it won't be perfect, but we'll see what we're talking about. Okay, so on my function that was graphed, I have the point 1, negative 1. Now according to this, I should be able to find on that original graph the opposite, so negative 1, but the y stays the same, negative 1. So, okay, so I should have this negative 1, negative 1 on my red graph. Okay, so let's look and see if we do. Negative 1, negative 1, there it would be right there. So you can see that they're reflected across this way. This point right here looks like maybe it's, we'll say, 5, negative 2. That's on my function and then we should have negative 5, negative 2 on the parent function. So here we look over here and 5, negative 2, sure enough, there it is. If we wanted to see one up here, we would have the point 1, 1 on my, that's my parent function, the red one's my parent function, and I should then on my function have negative 1, 1, the black. So negative 1, 1, sure enough, there they are. Find a point, look to see what changed. Did my x change or did my y change? And you'll know which reflection you have. Okay, now we're going to try to talk about smushes and stretches. If we smush something, basically your, your y's get multiplied by whatever happens to your graph, and that's going to be by your a value. Let's think back to the quadratic when we talked about it was x minus h. It's really a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. We didn't put the a in there before, it was just a 1. But now we're going to have its a, and different things happen with this a. If a is greater than 1, then this that means this thing is going to happen faster. So it's going to be something like this. And if we have a is between 0 and 1, then it's going to take even longer to do it. So it's going to be something that looks something like this. Okay, you've got two examples on your paper. 
So let's talk about the parent function here. Parent function here is the cubic. This is a stretch and this is a smush. That's what I call it anyway. So we have, if you look at my red one, that's probably actually what a normal cubic looks like. So it's been elongated. It takes a little bit longer to, before it turns. So we would call that a smush. That means that we have an A that is going to be between 0 and 1. It's going to be a fraction. So if we write our equation, we can write any fraction we want because it's just a possible one. Let's say it's half the rate. So half of, and this is a cubic, so it would be half x cubed. Notice it's still at the origin, so it hasn't moved up and down, left and right. It just smushed. Let's put it all together. Helpful if you follow a particular sequence, then nice things happen. And the basic rule is to apply the transformation closest to the x and then work your way out. Um, and the constant's always going to be last. When we look at this one, we have an h and a k, and that's all we have going on. So the parent function here is the absolute value. And h, so remember this is x minus h, so it was a negative 4. And k is going to be 2, and the a here is just a 1. So we want to graph. We know that the vertex of that absolute value graph would be on 0, 0. Now we have to go left 4 and then up 2 and that would be right here. So now my absolute value graph is going to sketch something like this. Now we have a reflection going here. So our parent family here is going to be the square root and h is going to be 3 because x minus h. a is going to be negative 1 and that's the reflection and remember if it's out like that then we have a vertical reflection or in other words we're going to have x and negative y and then we have k to be a positive 3 as well. So here's how we do it. Let's take this point right here 0 0 and the first thing we see closest to x is that minus 3 so we go 3 units to the right and then we have this reflection so if I could I would move down but I don't. Anything on the x-axis stays on the x-axis. Let's try and make sure that we can do another point. Origin is still sitting right here and then I'm going to have go over one, or 3, 1, 2, 3, and then reflect that so it's going to be for negative 1. This is just one, we've got two parts done, we're not done yet, so I'm going to put an x there. Now we have to shift everything up 3. So from here, from the, on the x-axis, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, so there is my minimum point. And this next one, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, so it's this point right here and then I would draw in my graph. In fact, let's make it a different color just so that we can see the difference between the work and the actual. So you can see that it definitely reflected and it went over 3 and up 3. We have the quadratic functions. h is, it's x minus h, so h is going to be negative 1. a is 2, and in this case a is not the reflection but it's going to be the stretch. So it's going to be skinnier. And k is going to be positive 2. So we do our negative 1. Here's the vertex. That would be 1. But let's also take this point here and make it become there. Okay. And then the second part is to multiply the y values by 2. Well, this one's going to stay here because it doesn't multiply. But this is a y value of 1. And now it's going to multiply by 2 and become 2. Okay. Maybe we should have done the third one. 1, 1, 2, 4, and then we would have gone to the left one. So now it's going to be there, and then we move it up. But 4 times 2 is going to be 8, so it's going to be way up here. So you can see this graph now is something like this. You can see it getting skinnier, but we still have one more piece to take care of, and that's going to be the up 2 units. So we go from the x-axis up 2 for the vertex. We go from the 2 up 2 for the second point, and then this one is also going to move up. So you can see that we have a graph that looks something like this. It's skinnier than a typical quadratic graph and it's been shifted over 1 and up 2. Now sometimes you don't have an actual function, you just have a graph. And then this is going to describe to me how to move all the points on that graph.
So we need to think about what's happening here. Well, h is going to be equal to negative 1. And let's do a next, because that's the next thing we would do. And that's negative f, so that means that it's, it's a negative 1, and it means that it's going to reflect the x axis. And then we have k is equal to negative 4. So let's start. Let's take this point right here. We want to go over to the left 1. And let's take this point right here, go over to the left 1, and we go right there. Take this one, and we'll go right there. And take this one, and it would go right there. And finally, this one would go right there. So if I were to graph my graph right now, it would look something like that. Okay, that's step 1. So the next one says reflect everything. Well, remember, anything on the x-axis stays on the x-axis. This point right here was at negative 3, 3, so I would need it to be negative 3, negative 3. Remember, you change the y. I just have to come down here and say 1, 2, 3, and that would be that point. That one stays. This one has to reflect. It's a negative 3 right now, so it needs to become a positive 3, 1, 2, 3. And then, then finally, this point right here is going to be not negative 6, but positive 6. So if I were to draw that one right now, it would look something like this. Same basic shape. It's just shifting. And then we have our final one where we have to drop everything down 4. So take this point. It finally gets to move again. 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, I'm taking my red points and shifting them. I'm going to take this point and go down 1, 2, 3, 4. This point was also on my graph, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. And now I have this part of my graph. And then I'm going to take this one and come down 1, 4. I'm going to take this point, 4. Now we have the three points that we connect to make this part. Okay, so if I come in here and erase all the other colors, we can see a little bit better what the final looks like all by itself. So that green is what we want. The blue is the original. It's been shifted over one. It's reflected. It's been shifted down four. Now we want to go and see if we can make an equation out of all this. Well, that's not usually too bad, except for this nasty little A. Okay, but we can do that. We're going to have a look at this graph, and we want to think about the origin. The origin was our vertex. Now it's my new vertex. Well, my new vertex is at point negative 2, 3. And that tells me h and k. h is negative 2 because we went left. k is 2 because it moved up. And then a is going to have a negative value because it's not an up parabola, but it's reflected down. So I know it's going to have a negative, but I don't know what this value is. But that's why there's this nice little point right here that says negative 3, negative 1. You can't see it very well, but it's right there. And we can take what we know, y is equal to a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. And I'm not even going to worry about putting the negative in for now. I'm just, but we can plug and chug because this is my x, this is my y, and I have h and I have k. The so y happens to be negative 1 is equal to some a times x from my point is negative 3 minus my h, which is a negative 2, so I'm going to add 2, that's a negative 3, and then plus my k, which is, k was 3, not 2. Negative 1 is equal to, oh, this is quantity squared, so negative 3 plus 2 is going to be negative 1 squared is going to be 1a plus 3. Subtracting 3, we have negative 4 is equal to a. So now we have everything we need, because we know a, we know h, we know k, and we can say that y is equal to negative 4, and it looks like it's stretched, times x minus the negative 2, or plus 2, quantity squared, and then plus 3. Let's try one more. So we have this parent function, and the parent function looks like it's going to be a cubic. And so we used to have something here at the origin, and it looks like it's about right here now. So what did we do? We went over 1 to the right, so it's a positive 1, is my h, and it looks like we went down 4, 
so that would be a negative 4 and then we have the point 3 negative 1 that x equal 3 and y equal negative 1 so now we have h k x y and we just have to put it into a cubic this time so if we do our work over here we have y is equal to a times x minus h cubed plus k y is negative 1 is equal to a which we don't know and then eight, x is 3 minus 1 which would be h and then we're going to cube that value plus our k value which is negative 4 I put the plus before I thought about my number alright so let's bring the 4 over this time make it look nicer so we bring the 4 to the other side and now we're going to have 3 is equal to a times 2 cubed and 2 cubed is just 8 so 8a equal 3 and a is going to be equal to 3 divided by 8 it's a fraction and this looks like it did elongate a little bit take a little bit longer to get places so we write our equation in this form so a is 3 eighths times x minus my h so minus 1 but it's a cubic so I have to cube that and then I went down 4 so minus 4 